gave as much as we could. And I think that for us, the most important thing was playing. And it's just been wonderful to get to know all of these people and to play and just enjoy making music, because that's what it's all about, really. So thank you. <laughs> She's only at the beginning of what I think will be an amazing stellar upward curve and it's going to be thrilling to watch. She's a wonderful musician and the other two will not go unnoticed so I'm even more happy. I think Sophie will make a fantastic CD. I think she's really ready for that. She's dying to do it. So, you know, she's it. She's the classical star. She's off. Thin skin of cool rock, precariously located between the cold freezer of space up there and a the red hot furnace down there. The epic story of the forces that shape our world, told by Ian Stewart. Earth, the power of the planet, a new series. Next Tuesday at 9 on BBC Two. And we're supporting BBC Children in Need. This year promises to be bigger than ever. Join the giant party as special guests line up to do something different in an evening of star-studded entertainment. So please give lots of money. BBC Children in Need Night, Friday from 7 on BBC One. Now on BBC Two with some strong language, exclusive access behind the scenes of one huge renovation project. A new six-part series for Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 10 on the eve of its opening, the £800 million railway station. Five years of construction. Grade one listed. 5,000 workers. 800 million pounds. Britain's gateway to Europe. The country's biggest railway project in over 100 years. St. Pancras International is about to open. Huge financial incentives and personal reputations are at stake. And for many, the project should be the pinnacle of their careers. Our island history ended in 1994 with the opening of the Channel Tunnel. Now the final connection to Europe is being made with the restoration of St Pancras in North London. Transforming from the Victorian icon to a 21st century rail terminal, St Pancras Station will be the final destination for Eurostar. Alistair Lansley sees himself as the architectural guardian of the original master plan of St Pancras Station. In awe of the 19th century architecture, his dream is to be recognized as one of the great railmen of his generation. He's dedicated the last 11 years of his life to the job, and it's the defining project of his career. When the build started, Alistair had a team of 40. He is now the last remaining railway architect on site. Happy when the sun's shining, I'm looking at 21st century Gothic. Beautiful. This is probably the best side of the station. It's even nice on the east side. But there it is, realised. The scaffolding coming down now, today, revealing it. It'll be there for another 120 years at least. 
remember we're calling this Europe's destination station now. Just the words themselves conjure up, conjure up being the best of Europe, the best in the world. And it should be. Every detail needs integrity, needs weight, the same solidity as the trains. And that wall has solidity, has quality, has integrity. I live and die it. The last remaining vestiges of true public space suits my politics, suits my way of life. <laughs> It's spring 2007, and five years of civil engineering is entering its final stage. The imperative is clear. The station must be on time and on budget. If not, the project will overspend and bonuses will be cut. There's a huge reputation hanging on this. Probably the, the same people that might build the Olympic Village. So they need to be seen to be smart clever with money, clever with program. But the word aesthetic is quite difficult. It's a bit like the David and Goliath story. Probably the best way of describing it. I do feel quite alone. Alistair and the engineers must ensure that the original St Pancras building is restored. Built in 1868, the station is grade one listed and protected by English heritage. As far as 105 is concerned, can we work it this way? Mm -hmm. the, the totems, mm -hmm. have you seen those? They're up now, have you seen them? I, I've seen them. But we're replacing them, aren't we? The mini pips. No, 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 totems. Engineer Ailey McAdam is the overall project director. The budget to restore the station is 800 million pounds. Her job, to keep costs down. She's putting Alistair's designs into practice but the build must be on time and within budget. So we move forward, we move forward on that. Glover, that a lot of conversations, we don't have so many now because I refuse to have them, but um, the architect may say, um, well, I let you build that out of miles still rather than stainless steel, so you save 35 grand there, and I want this to be a particular type of frosted glass, and it's going to cost you 20 grand. So you save 15 grand, you know, I've helped you save 15 grand. And those sort of, we've had lots of those type of discussions. And, and that's not where we're at, you know. I'm not, that's not the type of negotiation I'm after. I want to delete that, save some money there. If, if it doesn't need to be stainless steel, it could be mild steel. And let's talk about how we can best not spend 15 grand over there, you know, so. Alistair, we're busting a gut, yeah, seriously, to get these on there. No, but it be some way to me. The Queen doesn't come until November. Yeah, but we've got to, you know we've got a contract to close out. Yeah, well, there's, there isn't, there's a limit to... We've got to stop somewhere. She's probably going to cancel because The filthy lucre is always in the way, unfortunately. You know, there are people here whose reputation is probably in achieving a bonus by achieving a time scale, by achieving a delivery date, etc. Uh, but then you start to say, but at what price? The CCTV cameras at the time, this is like, what, a year ago or so, the CCTV cameras, you instructed, I think, to put them in a casing. We did. The clocks didn't get included in that CI. Well, we'd just like them to be included on somebody's scope. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, at this point in time, though, as far as 105 or 104, I'm it's not going to happen. I'm not worried about 105 or 105, just, meeting before the Queen opens the station. Right, right. As, far as, this me, as far as this meeting is concerned, then, it wouldn't be... I think my standard of quality, although I'm not an architect, and he'd, um... Alistair would just die in a corner if you heard me saying this, but I think I, I, I really do care about how that building's going to look. I mean, I spent, like, three and a half years of my life on it, and I don't want to... And I do care about it, but I don't want to spend an awful lot of money on it, if you sort of mean that I don't need to. Hmm. This is the queue. I'm sure we'll be able to skip it a little. Working alongside Ailey is engineer Claire Carr. She's in charge of 500 men. I think I'm going to have to... Baby. She's one of the most powerful women on site with responsibility for the Undercroft area of St Pancras. 
Built by engineer William H. Barlow, but left abandoned for the last 50 years, the Undercroft is now being restored and will become a signature feature in the new St. Pancras. The size of three football pitches, it will house a commercial shopping arcade, as well as the station's passport, immigration and departure areas. Directly above, six lines of high-speed trains will transport 20,000 passengers between London and Europe daily. Will that go on for the night shift? We're finishing at eight, so I was going to just go through the Concentrate on this one first. So number one, we said Tyler... As the Undercroft manager, Claire must coordinate over 20 different subcontractors, all with different responsibilities and priorities. Number three, three from the lift to three six. The Undercroft is approximately 20,000 square metres. And we don't know when six and a half thousand square meters of, t of ceilings are coming. We have given the dates that we require, which is between the second and third week of May, and we haven't had confirmation on that. So, you know, that's a lot of ceilings to go up. We have got no clarity at all that we're going to get them for second and third week of May when we want them. A delivery date in August is definitely too late. <laughs> Just looking at that, you can see there's a chamfer detail around the top of the reinforced yeah. head. Yeah. Look up there, it's missing. Here it's got plywood still fastened to it. You know, it's just inconsistent. The station's progress is regularly monitored through a series of site inspections. Alistair's architectural priorities are not necessarily shared by the engineers. I think it's a particularly ugly tread. Is there nothing we could have done that would have made that a little bit different? Well, they just need cleaning off. I mean, you've got colour contrast here. That nosing is black. And these, by the time you get traffic on them, they'll shine like gold. They're bronze nickel. It's just that they're filthy. They need a damn good clean. Even right? when they're clean, I don't think I'd like them, Alistair. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. You know, over time, they shine like jewellery. Engineers are very driven by programme because time is money. Whereas our, um, architects are kind of driven on perfection and detail and going to the nth degree to get all the levels lining up, which we don't really do. Where's Claire, Julian, or anybody? Where have they gone? The, the tops of these are terrible, aren't they? I can even see the weld grin is finished around here. Yeah. 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 We'll check all those, Alistair. Yeah. He lives in Cloud Cuckoo. We're working with a Grade 1 listed building. We are working right beside a railway line. We've got very little funding. We are quite tight to budget, and yet he wants amazing perfection out of amazing difficult designs. You can't have all of that. The building wasn't made exactly square. It's a real shame, that clapped-on piece there, isn't it? And, uh, you know, you wonder why you've got it when the door gear is here. Well, it's unacceptable. I don't think we want it there. His timing is frustrating sometimes. Not just his timing, but when, you know, it's something that we could have talked about a year or so ago, that would have been very nice, rather than talking about it ten days before you're going to finish the project. You know, that's, that can be a little bit frustrating in itself, but... The fact that he's as passionate as he is, I think, is admirable, really. You think about the knocks that he's had from all the various parties, and he's still maintained this real drive. You've got to admire that to a certain extent. Through gritted teeth. <laughs> You've got to admire it through gritted teeth. <laughs> the engineers have a tight schedule, which must be kept to. 20,000 panels and fittings will make up the Undercroft roof. Essential services like sprinklers, smoke detectors and lights will be encased by these panels. Once delivered, the panels must be sorted and installed on time. We all have a plan, we have a programme, we know our dates, we know our scope of work, but it truly depends on are we going to get the resource in to do it? Are we going to get the deliveries on the date we say we're going to get the deliveries? Because we depend upon our supply chain, and that is um, you know, a manufacturer of a manufacturer of somebody else who's actually making the stainless steel. So you might go three tiers back to find where the problem or where the hiccup might be. Don't run! You'll fall! Bezak! You're not getting away that easily! 
Leclerc works for the main building contractor. They've been given a July deadline to complete the main engineering works for the undercroft. If not, they'll be penalized 50,000 pounds a day. To avoid this, Claire must make sure the specialist subcontractors meet their deadlines. Lots of job done, isn't it? Well, pardon? Lots of job has done. Lots of jobs have done. I'd like to see some jobs coming to an end. You've put yeah. the units to in. Are you going to start putting the hangers in? Are we waiting for the Dennis instruction? Dennis's instruction? Yeah. To do what? He just told us to do this. And that's it for now. What can do I you do? want me to call Dennis? Yeah, and ask him. Dennis really hits me. Dennis, good morning, it's Claire. I'm guessing we're going to have to be friends this week, Dennis, because Richard's not here. Dennis Slaughter is the only man on site who knows how to fit the panels. We checked all the drawings, Dennis. I, I checked them with Sean over the weekend. The it's wonderful how many plans we can just conjure up. But at the start, there's only one way of doing it. Then you quickly think, what else can we do? How many times are you going from plan A to B to C to D? Very, very regularly. And then normally we go back to plan A because it then arrives. Okay, thank you. No doubt we'll see you out here sometime later. You would need to be. Bye. Such a lion bastard. Jesus Christ. Five people have rung it, every single one of them, aren't they? Claire's boss is Mark Allison, the manager of the whole 450 metre site and responsible for hitting the summer deadline. It's June and all the ceilings must be up by July. After a three week delay, thousands of panels have finally arrived. I'm looking for. 358 3575. Why not? Would that not be a 1.2 one? Yeah, but the, the concern is the panels have been here for 12 hours and he's only unpacked one crate. The panels aren't sorted into boxes that easily identify where they must go. Subcontractor Dennis is the only one who understands the complex coded system, and now it's his chance to prove himself to Claire and Mark. But why has he not got people working now, sorting them out? They're gone. Fucking hell. These are on the top are no good. Yeah, give it now. The ones that are in the bottom are for what? How does he know what he's got? He hasn't unpacked pack the boxes. Or has he? Well, these should be... Not knowing well, is worse me. than knowing something bad. If I don't know where something is, I panic. But even if it's bad news that I know, at least I know where we are. Attached to the back of the arch 19th century station, is the new 240 meter train deck extension. It's the first thing commuters will see upon arrival. As chief architect, Alistair Lansley's job is to maintain the integrity of the building's original design. The walls of the extension are made up of thousands of glass blocks that sit neatly in seven meter square frames. However, the frames on the east side of the extension overshoot by two inches which means that they do not match or line up with those on the west side. Alistair identified this problem six months ago and was assured it would be rectified. However, upon inspection, this is not the case. I can't believe it. It's completely different. All the corners. It's completely illogical. Completely. Looks as if all the steelwork is like clip on pieces. Oh, it's disastrous. And the wet day as well. The peer group will ridicule it. They'll see what I see. Not the man on the Clapham omnibus. But the peer group will say, what a pity. If it had just gone that extra mile. It isn't the airport, it's a railway station. It's been there for 120 years. It still looks fantastic. We're there for another 120 years. But where it will start to show is in the finishers. The finishers will 
will actually look a bit jaded in about 10, 15 years. And nobody will want to do it again, so it'll just look a sad, a sad little station. One of the most complex tasks for the engineers is to marry the old with the new. Ailey and Claire must ensure that English heritage are satisfied with their work. Do you think English heritage will buy it? I don't think they'll buy that. I don't think that's a finished product. It just looks too blatant that there's, uh, there's an issue. What we're going to do, I think, is work on this core piece mm -hmm. and see, see how good we can get it that we feather down in a way that is easy on the eye. Right. So without trying to tamper with this stone at all? Yeah. OK. Yeah, let's get it to its... Yeah. And then we'll bring English Heritage out here, Alistair, and see whether we can um, um, get them to accept that that's a, a reasonable way forward. All right? Yep, okay. Okay. The three week late deliveries have put Dennis way behind. With thousands of panels sitting around, the delay is causing a knock on effect to Mark's schedule. So, what's your plan today then? <laughs> I don't know. What is my plan today? should be happy as Larry, all this material. I'm happy as Larry, yeah. Hey. I really am. I'm yeah. over the moon. I'm really loving yeah. looking at ceiling tiles. Yeah. Is it going all right in there now, you feel? Yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, I couldn't commit myself. I've always thought it, it's too much to do. It really is too much to do. Dennis is under the impression that the scaffolding he needs to install the ceilings will be in place. Don't smile, you did. Monday night that will come down, he said. Now Monday. Sunday. Do you need it till Monday? I'm hoping I won't. Can you give me some of it? Because for tomorrow? Yeah. I want to give it all to you. Yeah. Go and have a look at Bridge too, make sure he's definitely ready. Because I think just go there with Dennis and have a look at that. That man's a twat. Patronizing little squirt. <laughs> You should have told him it was a Sunday night strike and not a Monday night. Stop. Don't you know? He won't finish. This. No, he won't. Sorry, he, will. he will. Service is one. Claire thinks I'm too soft with him. I think if I'm any harder with him, he'll fall to bits. Dennis is someone that you go, if you go hard at him, he just clams up. Just try and work with him. If he fails, we fail, so somewhere along the line there's a middle ground. I can't build his ceiling for him, and I can't sort his panels out if he doesn't want me to, because he has the information and I don't. But at least he's got more panels here. His body language is he isn't going to make it. So we've got to change that. Let's go find Claire and tell her the good news. Guarantees to fix the overshoot of the glass panels on the east side of the train deck extension have not been met. As a last resort, Alistair has drafted an email of complaint to his managing director. I have resisted writing to you since Wednesday, but I cannot help myself from saying how very disappointed I am re regarding the resolution of the east side screens. I think it was Johann Wolfgang Goethe who is quoted as saying, things which matter most must never be left to the mercy of things which matter least. That said, we should get together to work out how I inform English heritage in London Borough of Camden, because I think it's an architectural nonsense at the moment. I genuinely think it's probably the, the wrong way to procure a a grade one listed building in this, in this way. On time, on budget. But where's the quality? That's my question. Although the July deadline is approaching, Mark is still no clearer as to when the ceilings will be installed. The bigger question really is what we think Dennis is going to have done. 
thinking about after the conversation I had with him last night and his views whether we'll get anywhere close to what we want to be doing. Still got another week and you can do a lot in a week if he, can, if he puts his mind to it and finds his materials. So let's see what he can cut on with today. So I want to get them to do both sides today, tonight. Right. And then you want to take up the full width except the walkway down here? Yeah. All right. Are you, can you hear me? Yeah. I've had to come out of the office. I couldn't say what I need to say to you inside there. A decision has finally been reached about the east side screens. And you know the photographs that we took the other day of the side screens? Um, it would appear that they're not going to do any, any changes to them. I just cannot believe it. I was given assurances five, six months ago. I've got them all minuted, saying, yes, we'll take care of all the repairs. In reality, they're just out there toshing the bloody thing up. I can't believe it. And I said, you know, my, my peer group will judge me. You know, the first day that we do open it, they'll be down there, they'll photograph it, and they're going to say, what the hell's this about? I said, you know, it just looks like a bag of bloody bits. They've got it absolutely perfect on the west side. And yet, and yet to alter this, they're saying it's going to cost a million pounds and nobody's got the stomach for it. I think it's so bad that if they don't do at least the other 70%, I think I'll probably have to resign. Uh, that's how it is, from delight to, to absolute despair. Just, just ridiculous. I can't bear it. I can't bloody bear it. There's not one person there that would be supportive. It's just a, a big bloody say to say you bloody well hurt somebody so bad that had the best interests of this grade one list building at heart and you've just robbed the bloody country of it. It's very bad. It's very bad. I need to go. Thanks. The summer deadline to complete the major engineering works on the undercroft is a week away. Delivery, delivery, delivery. And they recognise performance. If you, if you perform, you get recognised, you know, and you get compensated for it. So it's, it's, um, it's delivery. I've got goals set for my performance, and I know if I make those goals, then I'll, I don't know what my bonus will be, because I don't, you never know what the bonus pool is, but you know that you will get compensated if you make the goals. So then, then I then drive it down to my team. So I've got goals, and then I just sort of filter them down to my team and, and chop them up in a way that makes sense for my team, and they've got their own goals. It's a really good way of aligning the team to work on, in the, on the right priorities. In fear of being overwhelmed by the commercial drive to finish the station, Alistair goes to the country to seek counsel from his friend and fellow architect, Rod Sheldon. Beautiful compass. Gorgeous. Hi, Rod. How are you? Nice to see you. If you employ an architect, then you have to rely on an architect to know about design. If he doesn't, then you don't employ him, mm. obviously. Mm. So they should be listening to you on all of these aspects of it. Mm. You know, there are matters of design which are important. And I'm sure that if, you know, well, I think you probably have surprised them. But on things that, you know, they're letting go, they don't understand what they're letting go and what they could have had instead. But you might argue that's my failure. I don't think it is your failure. I mean, there's one of you to how many of them? 900 people working in those offices and so on. All with a pen. With a tremendous momentum of getting things built, because that's the dictum all the time, isn't it? On time, mm. on budget, get moving, you know, where's the programme, keep moving and so on. Mm. 
And if you're perceived to sort of stand in the way, that momentum just happens to roll over your head and what you're shouting gets lost in a way. Yeah. It may just be that you've got to sort of stand at the top of the stairs on the third floor and absolutely scream at them. Or cut my throat. I don't think you should cut your throat. No, that'd be an absolute disaster if you did. Yeah. Why would you do that? Because that would be failure. You're winning the battle, aren't you? Yeah. In many respects, although you lose something. Like this. Maybe you must They're not reading it like they do in the Northern Hemisphere. What? Oh, Talking thought, to I myself. You... See? <laughs> when you answer yourself, that's when you've got to I do that regularly. Right. I don't mind being killed at the hands of a jealous lover, but not by a cancer. I can't.